So this episode, we're going to be exploring the idea of gravitational time dilation. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about. We see it a lot in science fiction, and it's also one of the most practical applications of my beloved bowling ball on a trampoline, <laughs> my space time. The way that it works is this idea that we have a bowling ball on a trampoline. The trampoline sinks down. This is space and time that's bending from the bowling ball on the trampoline. And we talk about space bending. Um, I've talked about that with the idea of artificial gravity and faster than light travel, but time is also being warped here. And what happens is the deeper that you're in the gravitational well, the slower time goes for you. And so satellites um, that are going around the Earth are actually experiencing time faster than we are on Earth, which is kind of cool and weird to think about. And like I said, there is actual practical application to this. We do see this effect. And the example that most of us can apply this to is the concept of GPS in our phones. So our phones have GPS tracking in them. They're using GPS satellites that are keeping a track of our location. And those satellites are further out of our gravitational well than we are here on the surface of Earth. And they're actually experiencing time differently than we are. Now we're talking fractions of nanoseconds, like this isn't that much of a difference. But if you wanna know where you are down to the level of like feet or meters, then you do need to account for that time dilation, um, this gravitational time dilation, the idea that these satellites are experiencing time differently from us. Now, the example most people can think of from science fiction where this relates is from Interstellar. So in Interstellar, they visit a planet that's very close to a black hole. So on the planet, they spend a fixed amount of time there and the time difference that they have is they experience one hour on the surface of the planet and it's actually seven years have passed um, back on the ship, back on Earth. So that's a bit screwy to think about, but this is how gravitational time dilation works. If you're in a really deep, steep black hole, time is gonna be traveling a lot slower for you than it is for the people who are outside the black hole. Now, that time dilation of one hour to seven years, um, when I heard that, I went, ooh, ooh. <laughs> because um, it's true, black holes are very, very steep. Remember, they're so steep that uh, at a certain point, light can't even escape. The escape velocity in order to get out is actually faster than the speed of light, so they're black holes. Um, but you can orbit a black hole like normal. It is an object in space, and if you're far enough away, you will just see a gravitational bend. If our sun just turned into a black hole, same mass, same distance, everything, um, the lack of light would be a problem, but we would keep orbiting it just fine. We're in what we call the green zone around a, a black hole, um, around this gravitational well. As you get closer to a black hole, you start to enter this yellow zone. And what that means is that the closer that you are, um, you can still orbit it and you can still get away from it, but you need fuel to keep moving. Otherwise you will eventually fall in. And then we have the red zone and that's where you're not ever coming out of that. Um, your mass and your ship and whatever uh, have to obtain a certain escape velocity to get out of the black hole and that ain't gonna happen. So if you're experiencing one hour for every seven years, that time dilation is so extreme. You are so far in the red zone of that black hole, you're never coming back out of that. So that was kind of my science went, ooh -hoo. Um, But you know, still kind of cool and a good demonstration of this idea of gravitational time dilation. Now, um, how can we apply that in the real world? Um, like I said, GPS satellites utilize this. Time moves faster for them than it does for us on Earth because we're deeper in this black hole. And, uh, but you can also apply the calculation to the center of the Earth. So some scientists have calculated this, that the center of our Earth is deeper in the gravitational well. So time is going slower for it than it is for us on the surface. And actually the center of the Earth is about, depending on where you draw the line with the age of the Earth, um, it's about two and a half to six years younger than we are on the surface, which is kind of cool. And that got my brain thinking. So I thought in the journey to the center of the Earth, when they go into the center of the Earth, they're going back in time, you know, to prehistoric creatures going around. So I was like, well, how much of a gravitational well would there have to be for us to have that extreme of a time dilation from our surface to the center of the Earth? So I did the math, so you don't have to, and I consulted with my paleontologist friend, Trevor Valley, Tattoos and Bones, thank you for helping me out. Um, 
trying to figure out which creatures they see in the journey to center of the earth and actually how far in the past those creatures existed. So turns out it ranges um, from 400 million years ago to 11,000 years ago, which is a big range. But I was like, well, let's do the math for both. Let's see the most extreme examples. So in the journey to the center of the earth, they see mastodons. Mastodons are about 11,000 years ago. See how I'm thrown down? I learned some paleontology here. <laughs> and if we were gonna have the time dilation calculated, so on the surface we're this time, but the center of the earth is 11,000 years younger, how big would the earth have to be to have that gravitational time dilation um, and maintain one G on the surface? This is kind of where I pulled up. This is just fun to think about. Please don't get too nitpicky about this. So um, on the surface, have 1G gravity. In the center, have it be 11,000 years ago. And the size of the Earth would have to be half of Mercury's orbit around the sun. So we have the sun, and then we have Mercury's orbit, and about half of that is how big Earth would have to be to have an 11,000 year time dilation from the age of the Earth. Um, fun? <laughs> Uh, not too insane, still kind of insane, but fun to think about. And then we have the 400 million year uh, time dilation. And this one, I was so curious to see what it was. So again, did the math. And uh, if you want to have 1G on the surface and the earth is four and a half billion years old, what would, how big would the earth have to be for that gravitational time dilation? And the answer was <laughs> big. Um, the radius is 5,000 times the distance from the earth to the sun. So we call that an AU, an astronomical unit. The distance from the sun to the earth is one AU. Uh, and in this scenario, the earth would have to be 5,000 times that, um, approximately out to the Oort cloud. So we have our solar system, we have the eight planets, then we have the Kuiper belt where we have Pluto and Aries and a bunch of the dwarf planets. And then you keep going and you get a big circular Oort cloud. So it's about 5,000 AU or about the size of the Oort cloud, which is kind of the biggest, it's far. <laughs> really far. Um, still fun to think about. The Earth would have to be that big. It would have to be 5,000 AU in radius for us to have a gravitational time dilation from the surface to the center over the age of the Earth that equated to the center of the Earth being 400 million years ago. So fun to think about. Science is awesome. Um, now the last example that I want to use for gravitational time dilation is again Voyager, Star Trek Voyager, um, my baby, my favorite, um, has a brilliant episode called In the Blink of an Eye. And they kind of reverse this effect. So the idea is they arrive at a planet, um, when they get to the planet there's this big uh, earthquake on the surface and they see this star appear in the sky. Just like we can look up when we, when we know the International Space Station is going overhead, it looks like a star, you can see it moving in the sky. So this is what happened in the blink of an eye. So Voyager appears in the sky, civilization sees Voyager appear, um, and then they realize that actually what they're experiencing, Voyager's time is going forward, and on the surface, time is actually going a lot faster. So on Voyager, they're able to observe this whole civilization evolve. Now, the civilization is affected by the fact that there's a star up there, kind of a 2001 space odyssey, like this appearance of technology is what drives the evolution of the civilization. Kind of cool from an anthropological, you know, um, sociological perspective. So their time dilation in the blink of an eye is that 100 years pass on the surface of the planet for every 10 and a half hours on the ship. Um, now, I've played again with the math with this because I can, and that's really extreme. Um, it's a little insane, it's a little breaking physics, but this is Star Trek and we have things like Technobabble and other technology because it's so far in the future. And um, again, the other problem is as cool as this episode is and it does address gravitational time dilation, it's reversed. So the surface is experiencing time faster than the starship is. And that's the opposite of what we experience. Usually it's when you're deeper in the gravitational well, you're experiencing time slower than the, than whatever's orbiting. Um, but they actually kind of made this work and I don't know if they intended to do it, but it worked. Now I made a video about tachyons. If you haven't seen that, you can go watch that. Um, but tachyons have this idea that all of mass bends space-time. They're all bowling ball and trampoline. That's how mass works. Tachyons are the opposite of that. So they invert space-time. And um, the way they explained 
this weird planet in Star Trek Voyager is that it had a tachyon core, which meant that it was an opposite bending of space-time than uh, what was going on around it, which then makes the gravitational time dilation work because they are in a hugely inverted bubble as opposed to a big dip. So time would be going faster for them than it is for the starship on the outside. And there's lots of cool stuff in the episode about how time gets shifted and they have to transport. Um, and it's just, it's a cool episode. But again, it addresses gravitational time dilation. It does the inverse of that, but in explaining it, they use tachyons, which works. So anyway, those are some cool examples of gravitational time dilation. I hope you enjoyed it and live long and prosper. I will catch you next time. Thanks.